question. Some days you speak about ADHD, mm -hmm. and just first a uh, first AFT works for that. You mm -hmm. tap text. Yeah. It's a, a little child, mm -hmm. and where do you think it come from? Well, it, it's not a problem. It's a coping mechanism. So ADHD or ADD or dyslexia, all of them are driven from the basic, same basic thing. Is it's driven from stressed emotions, fears and anxieties, emotional conditionings at school and or at home. And so to dissipate it is one step into their mind and see what they're doing. Um, I've uh, adults that come to see me and ch children a lot easier, uh, but you know, um, addressing what it is now again what builds it like there was a kid uh, in Ireland uh, and he 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 was dis labeled dyslexia basically he could write his name perfectly backwards in the snow he hated school he hated his life I mean they had to drag him out of bed to get him to go to school he was the low man on the totem pole in school the bottom of the list and so one of the things that I gave his parents is a homework assignment for him And I said, give him a list, a homework assignment, and have him write a hundred things he hates about school. He said, oh, he can't do that. I said, just give it to him. All right? So it took him 20 minutes. He had a hundred things about school he hated. All right? So that's back before Zoom and Skype, you know? And I did a phone session, and Mom was tapping on him as I was directing the show. And at one point, he started crying, became limp, and she's, I, she said, he's crying. He said, just keep tapping. Don't worry about it. It's part of the program. And by the time we're done, he was like a limp doll. They took him home, tuck him in bed. Next morning, he woke up, dressed, ready to go to school. And his parents were totally shocked because they had to drag him out of bed to get him to go to school. All right. So in that one hour or so session, this stuff that drove his, it's not a disease, it's not a disorder, it's a coping mechanism. He went to school. And then the next time I heard about this little boy, he had another problem. Now he's in, I don't know, like I would say American 10th or 11th grade or 12th grade, probably 10th or 11th grade. And now they want to move him out of the normal school into the super smart gifted class. And he was being triggered because he didn't want to leave his friends. So at the bottom of the, of the, of the class to the top of the class and moving him even to the higher educated class. And it's all because ADD, ADHD is an emotional mechanism. Some people, the ADD, ADHDs, they will have in their mind lots of TV, sh like images in their mind because they're being hyper vigilant because they don't know what bad things are going to happen. So they're trying to keep, keep paying attention to what the world is. And they, they're hyper vigilant. Now you kind of put them up, like the woman who came to see me, she's a psychiatric nurse. And she said they, they diagnosed me as ADD or ADHD. I don't remember which one. And, and I started stepping into her mind. And this is what happened. Here she is. She's a little kid going to school. And she said, you know what I do in school? I can't learn. I said, what's going on? She says, I'm so scared and so afraid. What's going to happen to me tonight when I get home from school? So you think about it. You got a scared little rabbit shaking in its boots at school. Try to get them to learn. They can't. So there is something. Now it could be, now there's variables, many variables. It could be the big brothers picking on them all the time. It could be Uncle Joe. It could be some kid on the bus. They could have school trauma. You know, when I work with this guy, he's in his, I don't know, about four, 30s or 40s. And he's four years old and they go to school in Ireland. And they beat this kid. Tormented this kid. Every day. How, you think he's going to learn? You think he's going to be calm? It created an atmosphere mentally and emotionally. So the variables are driven basically by emotions, traumas, and experiences. And all you have to do is step into their world, into their mental world. You know? So you understand, step into the world, what are you doing? And it's like Dr. Richard Bandler, you know, he's a friend of Virginia Satir. And he would volunteer his time working in a mental institution. And this guy, you know, it's a, it's a true story. I believe it's true. He would rip the sheets off of the, off the bed, wrap it around him, and he, he pretended to be Jesus Christ. He's preaching and sending people to hell in the, in the, in the, in the mental institution. In, in April, Richard hired a couple of big black football players, and they put Trojan warrior suits on them. 
they came into this room with these big, long wooden planks. He lays the planks down, and he's, and he's building a cross with these big nails. And this guy with the sheet wrapped around him who thinks he's Jesus Christ, he goes, what are you doing? He said, well, you know, Good Friday's coming. It's not so good for you, but good for me. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this guy re started recanting his Christhood. Because if he didn't change his world view, he would be hanging on that cross too. So he stepped in, when you step into the world of the individual, what are you doing in there? And you make the adjustments. Now this is, this is what you do. So you, when, when, when Kathy comes to see me or Nigel or you, I, 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 I say, how do you know? What are you doing in there? Do you have proof and references to create this? And we make those adjustments. So again, ADD, ADHD is a processing of information driven by unpleasant events. And they're trying to be safe. You know, the guy who's, um, he's, in, he's decided to go back to university, um, you know, he's in his 40s or so. And uh, he says, you know, I can't pass math. I have horrible math anxiety. I make it straight A's and everything but math. And over the phone, I mean, he's in Wichita, Kansas, over the phone, I work with him and say, well, any, you have any unpleasant math experiences or learning experiences? Oh, yeah. I remember sitting at the kitchen table and dad's teaching me math and he knocked me from the table and said, you're stupid, you'll never get math. One trauma. And from that point forward, he never did well in math until I cleaned up that trauma and he sent me an email and said, Robert, I made my first 100 A plus on math after we did our session. So it's all driven by emotions, trances, fears, and anxieties. And that's how you do it. Good? Thank you. Right, you're Thank welcome. you. Yeah. Yeah, guys, if you want to change the world, and by the way, we need a world change, work on kids. And parents, too. <laughs> uh, raise your hand, you know your parents played a major role in your emotional bullshit. <laughs> Oh, we won that one, didn't we? <laughs>